PMRC were attacking different bands from Sheena Easton to Prince to Judas Priest with songs like Eat Me Alive. You had the PMRC telling Rocket had to clean up its act or suffer the consequences. Everything depended on how Rock responded. They weren't just going to put a sticker on a record. This was going to be used as a way of eliminating certain records from being carried in the stores. It was rock and roll Armageddon. Well, as long as rock's been around, there's always been people trying to neuter it. I decided to get involved because I began to see the kind of rock lyrics that my kids were being exposed to. It shocked me, made me angry. When I was a kid, I had this record that had a lot of swearing on it. I mean, I blasted it out, and my dad came in one day, and he goes, You son of a bitch, what the f are you doing? <laughs> you to you, you're gonna go to hell, you little f sucker! Well, I decided to get involved because I was insane. To think we had a chance against those powerful women. I heard all these songs about masturbation, oral sex, F-wording, and it was terrible. I think if Tipper Gore came out and said, rock music's great, I think all kids should listen to it, we'd all be country artists. <laughs> People thought I was out of touch living in the mountains, but you couldn't miss this issue. The issue of First Amendment rights is a significant one. What's not okay is bands, musicians, writers changing their words so they can be sold in Walmart. What's up with that? It all started in 1985. I was working as a lobbyist in Washington, and we were trying to get a bill passed called the Blank Tape Tax, which really had nothing to do with the PMRC at first, but it would have meant billions for the record companies. All I had to do was bend over and kiss a little ass. Senator Cranston's always been a strong supporter of the arts. Yes, music's part of the arts. Frank, why are you fighting me on this? We Charlie. both know it's a total win for the senator. Frank, hang on a sec. It's Washington Post. Need a quote on the bill. Hey, is this Jim? Hey, baby. Yeah, here's your quote. The bill will put a tax on all blank audio tapes sold. That money will be delivered to the record companies and then distributed to the artists. It's the only fair way to address the billion dollar a year injustice caused by home taping. Hey, hold on a sec. I'm about to get an exclusive for you. Hey, Frank? Yeah. Senator Simon's office. It's crazy, huh? The senator from Illinois co-sponsors a bill and I can't even get a commitment from you guys? Well, that sounds good to me. Bills are like TV shows. You never can have too many sponsors. Thanks, buddy. This just in. Senator Cranston is the proud new co-sponsor of our bill. Hey, the day is young. We get together later on. I'll fill all the column Here's inches you, you need. I gotta go. Pamela, this is the man behind the blank tape tags, Charlie Berner. Pamela Tate, nice work on that Star Wars markup. It's the talk of the office. It's a great program. Sells itself. I pulled her off Star Wars to help us crunch numbers for the hearings. Fantastic. Can't get enough top flight help around here. Yeah, they put it into Thurman's committee, I hear. Right. Uh, you're gonna have your work cut out for you there. Senator Thurman is no patron of the arts. I wouldn't worry about Thurman, sir. No? No, my fraternity brother's one of his top aides. I told you he was good. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, a few of us are going out for drinks, you know, to celebrate going to committee. You, uh, you want to come? Can't. I've got my aerobics class. So you're Nancy Reagan and Jane Fonda. <laughs> no, just kidding. I just thought that, you know, since we're going to be working together, maybe we should get to know each other a little. I don't date people I work with. Right. Only guys in spandex and leg warmers. Lucky for you, I have an open mind. I was thinking Let's about Let's get one maybe... thing clear. I was pulled off a project that could save the world from nuclear annihilation, something I actually cared about, to help you save the music industry from tape recorders. Right, which is why you should be thanking me. Obviously, you're far too emotionally involved in this Star Wars thing. That could ruin your career. You see, Washington is like a big broken vending machine full of candy. Clients pay us because we know how to kick the machine and get the candy out. It's the first rule of this business. If you want to save the world, join the Peace Corps. If you want to save your job, get the candy. So where are we going? 
Some other time, then. Another benefit, another thousand dollars. On the first day of Congress, every senator's wife should be issued a sensible pair of shoes. Throw an inflatable husband while you're at it. Oh, no joke. I think most lobbyists seem more a Sam than I do. Excuse me, are you Mrs. Gore? Yes. Very pleased to meet you. I'm Susan Baker. Oh, of course. I met your husband last year at the White House Christmas dinner. That's right. This is my friend Shirley. Mrs. Gore. Oh, please call me Tipper. Nice Tipper. benefit. We were ready to go two hours ago. You know how it is. All these men just love to talk, talk, talk. Oh, that's so true. Sometimes I think the Capitol's just one big midlife frat party. <laughs> Tipper, without betraying any party loyalties, I've heard great things about your task force for congressional wives. Oh, thank you. What's going on with that now? Well, lately, being a wife and mother is about all I can handle. Ugh. So that's you who started that task force. How nice. Senator Paula Hawkins from Florida. Nice to meet you. I think it's wonderful when you Washington wives put your heads together. I mean, you don't have to be a senator to make a difference, do you? Mm. Ladies. You get the feeling she likes saying that word, senator. <laughs> Tipper, how would you feel about Shirley and me coming to your next meeting? Great. Shh. New Year's Eve concert, Winterland, 1977. I'd say 79. All right, Charlie. Doesn't look much like a rocker now, does it? <laughs> so, you, uh, you're gonna loosen that tie and join us tonight, huh? For what? Van Morrison's playing the National. We've had the tickets for, like, months. Oh, guys, I totally forgot. I, I've been working on this bill. I told you about it, right? Uh, yeah, right. Refresh my memory. Who's screwing who? Nobody's screwing anyone. We're trying to convince the government to get musicians some money to compensate them for home taping losses. <laughs> Be there at eight. I, I, I can't. I, 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 got, I got a million phone calls to make. I got two breakfast meetings. Hey, Charlie, we're talking about Van, the man. <sighs> if you can't sell it at the door, I'll pay for it. Forget it. We'll scalp the tickets and we'll buy you a life. Thanks. I'm trading in. Hot rats? You're trading in Zappa? For Echo and the Bunnymen. Hey, hey, they've got some really great songs, man. Have you, have you heard Rescue with that great opening riff? The hair gel. It seeped into his brain. Are you guys seriously going to stand there and tell me that there was no good new music? Yes. Fine. We'll all just sit around and listen to our college albums. Enjoy the concert. Enjoy your two breakfast meetings, huh? But don't come here tomorrow night trying to tell us how you saved the music by missing Van. Because as far as I'm concerned, you and the music are through. You're not even on speaking terms, all right? Just take your bunny men and go! Go! Don't take it too personally. He's, uh, he's been like this ever since the Stones went disco. Bill will put a tax on all blank tape and give the money to music companies to distribute to the artists, said record industry lobbyist Charles Berner. Yeah, like we're going to see one dime of that after the executives get their share. You really think people are going to take this seriously? Hey, we've got a record company now. Maybe we can get in on the action. Yeah, I can see the headlines now. Government bails out Zappa. <laughs> Hot Rats, Reagan's favorite album. Well, I walked into the bedroom, and my eight-year-old was standing there singing along to... What's her name? Madonna. Like that's her real name? <laughs> my little girl was standing there singing Like a Virgin and doing a little wiggle dance. 
I've never seen anything like it. I have. Hmm? About a week ago, I bought this Prince album for one of my daughters. Prince, Madonna, who do these people think they are? The Vatican royal family? <laughs> <laughs> it had just won a Grammy, so I assumed that it was okay. Then a couple nights later, they were listening to this song called Let's Go Crazy that they all love. Well, <laughs> they were so cute dancing around the family room that I decided to join them. But then this other song came on called Darlin' Nikki. And the lyrics were about some girl touching herself in a hotel lobby. <laughs> well, I don't need to tell you, these were words I never thought that I would hear in my own home. And the worst part was, my kids knew all of them by heart. So, in the last few days, I've started paying a lot more attention to what my children are exposed to. I've been watching MTV. I've seen half-naked women being beaten and tortured. I guess it's always been that way, but I never really noticed it. I think it's high time the people who expose our children to this filth should take responsibility for filling their minds with pornography. Have you ladies tried the tea cake? Oh, yeah. Delicious. I certainly don't think a lot of parents even realize what's out there. You know, I think we should really do something about this. Uh-huh. That was Twisted Sisters' latest, We're Not Gonna Take It, featuring brother D. Snyder. Ugh. Oh, I've been trying to figure out that guy's name all day. You know, I think this music thing is just the project you've been looking for. Thank you. You want me to turn off the lights? In a minute. Sam. Darling. I'm still talking to you. I'm tired, Binky. You were telling me what committees oversee the recording industry. Well, let's see. There's the Judiciary, of course, okay. and the Commerce Committee. I'm on that one. And I'm on the uh, House uh, uh, slow down. Commerce. Where did I put that Christmas card mailing list? So what do you call yourselves? I don't know. Ladies who lunch? No, it's got to sound official. I'm serious. You need an organization. There are only a few of us, huh? Does it matter? Look, in this town, if you've got an official-sounding name, you're official. Thanks, Phil. And please tell the senator that Americans who value their freedom know they can always count on him. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we'll see you at the fundraiser. Thank you. And thanks, Senator Kennedy, for me. Ted's on board. Yes. You know, for a Reaganite, you certainly have a way with Democrats. Well, the sooner we ram this bill through, the sooner I can go back to playing with the grown-ups. You know, I don't know if it's the sleep deprivation or the fumes from this marker, but I think we're going to pull this off. Not without some more Republicans. Mr. Bernard, there's a Bucky on line one for you. Speak of the devil. From Bucky? From Strom Thurmond's office. Buckaroo! Strom getting those cigars I sent over? <laughs> That's why they were so cheap. No kidding. Buck, you are the man. You are the man. Thank you. Our bill's gonna clear committee by the end of the month. We're gonna go to the full Senate? Only if nothing comes up between now and then. Nothing's gonna come up. That's my job. 
Nancy Moore Thurman. These cookies you brought are delicious. <laughs> I don't know how Senator Thurman keeps his boyish figure. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what was the next suggestion? Uh, Mother's Against Corn Rock. Mmm, mmm, Matt Burr. It's got a ring. It's okay. Well, it's just Mother's Against Porn Rock seems a little on the nose to me. I think it needs to be broader, more official. Point taken. Uh, parents' office on pop music. I like that. Oh. Parents' music symposium? Yes. Oh, dear. No, wait a second. I think this one is actually close. How about Parents Music Center, PMC? I'll get it. That's good. No, but need something more. It's not quite okay, authoritative. How about Parents Music Resource Center? MRC. I don't know. I'm not sure. Can we get your opinion on something, young man? I guess, sure. What sounds more official to you, the PMC or the PMRC? PMRC? Is that the right answer? I guess. The PMRC. That's it, then. The PMRC. Cool. Can I just say, you ladies have excellent taste in music. <laughs> 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 Ozzy Osbourne, showing here, has millions of young followers. And how does he use that power? By singing a song called Suicide Solution. By taking LSD and bragging about it. By biting the head off a live bat. Mr. Bean, we really appreciate you showing us your slides. Tell me, Donald, who have you shown these to? Oh, high schools, youth groups, mostly. Would you be willing to make a presentation to a larger adult group? We're looking for something a little more sophisticated. It can get pretty disgusting. <laughs> if that would be of interest to you ladies. As soon as this bill sails through, I gotta go. Interesting little meeting this afternoon. I think somebody from the office should go. PMRC? Who are these people? Some kind of musical PTA. I'll go, but why? Well, it concerns our clients. And Senator Gore's wife is one of the people doing the inviting. The matrons strike back. Uh, have fun. Hey, take Norris with you. Sorry. And Pamela, why don't you go too? Oh, you uh... can. Don't worry, it won't count as a date. Listen to this. Some rock and roll groups sing of open rebellion against parental and other authority. Dear God, does the president know about this? Other rock groups advocate satanic rituals or sing of killing babies. Great. I know a place we can eat on the way. So this is what the moral majority smells like. Hello, everyone. It's great to see so many faces here today. It definitely reinforces the feeling that so many of us have had, that the excesses of the recording industry have gone too far and that a line must be drawn. Drawn and then snorted. I'm Tipper Gore, and I'll introduce my co-host in a moment. But right now, we'd like to give you a sample of what our children are being subjected to. Mr. Bean? Thank you, Mrs. Gore. Lights, please. Bear in mind that what I'm going to show you today is just a small sample of the abundant material that is out there. Today, the element of excessively violent, brutal erotica has exploded in rock music. That's got to be messy. <laughs> this is an album. 
by the popular group Twisted Sister, led by lead singer Dee Snyder. The band glamorizes sadomasochistic sex, singing, your hands are tied, your legs are strapped, you are going under the blade. The band Kiss, very popular with the young people, thinks positively about prostitution and copulation and sodomy. They sing, hot blood need your love, hard as a rock can't get enough, want to feel you deep inside, pumping through my veins, feel you to the core. Like a dog to a bone, make you sweat, make you moan. Love is sweet, so insane. Come on, lick my candy cane. <laughs> Will you guys give stop me it? <laughs> oh, give me more. Baby, give me more. I want you. Come on, give me, give me more. Give me, give me more. Gimme, give gimme, give oh. <laughs> we made it, we made it. The mentors sing, all through my excrement you shall roam. <laughs> Bend up and smell my anal vapor. Your face is my toilet paper. On your face I leave a shit tower, golden showers. Golden showers. Bend <laughs> 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 up and smell my anal vapor. <laughs> Laugh all you want, but that audience is mine. Oh, come on. I counted wives of five house members, and that was just in the last eight rows. There's a lot of bored housewives in this town. You're not going to think it's so funny when their husbands are looking sideways at the music industry when your bill is going to a vote. That is not going to play anywhere outside this church. Hey, Charlie, I've just got to tell you, man, your face is my toilet paper. <laughs> Golden showers. Golden showers. Well, as I began to watch MTV, I started to see some truly appalling images, and I realized... Hey, Charlie, that you got to see this. And so that was when you all got together. Yes, we said, you know, someone has to do something. Well, I think I can speak for all of us here when I say it's about time. Thank you. What's this? Especially those of us who are Local parents. morning show, filling air time. Senator Thurman's office on line two. Burner. Hey, Buck. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, we had green lights the whole way. The PMRC? The PMRC, they're a bunch of housewives with stationery. That's right. No, look, just give me a couple of days. Let me do some damage control. Let me figure this thing out, okay? Right. Thurman's tabling it. His wife, Nancy, is one of them. Can you believe it? Buck said he's doing us a favor. That no bill from the record industry has a chance in hell right now. Oh, those women! I... We were this close. Now I'm as far from making partner as... as you are. Thanks. Crew up. We have to face the fact that we're not going to get what we want until they get what they want. Hi there. Charlie Burner from Rutten Sloan. Susan Baker. Hi, these are my associates, Pamela Tate and Andrew Norris. Hi, Susan Baker. We're uh, helping the recording industry here in the Capitol. What a lovely purse. Thank you. That is nice. Got it on sale. Can I ask where? Right here in Georgetown, believe it or not. They've got some great shots. Well, we didn't come here to accessorize, did we, ladies? <clears throat> I think I can speak for everyone when I say how happy we are that you've come to us with your concerns, and anything we can do to help, we will. Anything at all. Thank you, honey. How about a rating system? Excuse me? You know, just like they have for the movies. You put a warning label on your product so that everyone knows what they're getting? What about that, Charlie? Well, actually, the industry has considered a rating system in the past, 
but with 25,000 songs a year as opposed to 325 movies, it is a little impractical. How about putting the lyrics on the cover? We've thought of that, too. Unfortunately, the record companies don't have the authority to do that. The rights to the song's lyrics belong to the publisher. Well, there must be something that the record companies can do. I'm sure there is. But right now, we're trying to get some relief from home taping, which is threatening to destroy the entire industry. Ah. Yeah. But I can guarantee, if you ladies want to come back next session with some new ideas, we'd love to work with you. Well, that's a very generous offer. Did you really just tell those women to come back with better ideas? Crap about purses! It's called politics, Charlie. You get a lot further with a compliment than you do with a blowtorch. These women are not dummies. Oh, come on. A rating system for over 25,000 songs? Just like they have for movies. The, the wives wanted a little attention and they got it. In a couple of days, this whole thing will cool down. This time, I'm right. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Then we'll be in Cleveland for two nights. And then... What do you think of this PMRC? Nice hairdos? Yeah, but they're out there. And they're multiplying. After Cleveland, you'll go down to Dallas. Washington. D.C.'s not on the tour this year. It is now. Oh. Damn it. Mr. Curtis? You all right? They want an X rating for sex, a V rating for violence, a D slash A rating for drugs and alcohol. They want an O rating for the occult, all enforced by an independent board. They want the ban on all albums containing satanic messages recorded backwards. How are we supposed to do that? There are no albums containing satanic messages recorded backwards, are there? It gets worse. Worse? They've given a list of songs they're targeting to the media. They call it the Filthy Fifteen. Filthy Fifteen? Oh, that's terrific. Madonna, Prince, Cindy Lauper, some of the industry's biggest earners are on it. Springsteen? What could they possibly have against the boss? They say the song I'm on fire is about incest. Oh, that's ridiculous. Leave the bottle. <laughs> okay. Why didn't anyone see this coming? That's my fault. I... I didn't really think anyone would take them seriously. John, if you would have been to this church meeting, the... It was all of us. Never underestimate the power of personal connections in this town. The same thing that can get your bill to the floor can make it vanish into thin air. So now what? What's your bill, Charlie? What's the play? I'll, uh put out some feelers to the major record labels about a generic warning label. Do I say we make a deal with the PMRC, nip this thing in the bud and get back to business? All right. Don't let this escalate into a confrontation. This is a fight we can't win. Understood. I'll draft an agreement. It'll be 15. Hey. Please be good news. This bill is suddenly deader than dead. I need some good news. We're catching flack from musicians. They're not too happy about this warning label. Screw the musicians, okay? It's just a sticker. One, two for you, Mr. Burner. What now? Burner. I'm told you may be one of the monkeys responsible for my record label's disgusting capitulation to an uptight bunch of Washington housewives. Who is this? My name is Frank Zappa, and I'm coming for you, monkey boy. Animal F-U-C-K like a beast, let me put my love into you. Teen pregnancies and teen suicide rates are at epidemic proportions today. Don't you think this music has something to do with that? Well, all I know is I wrote a song about dental floss, but nobody's teeth got any cleaner. I'm just wondering if there is anything that Mr. Zappa won't let his kids listen to or watch on TV. Uh, I tell them to turn the television right off. They see a guy in a brown suit with a little telephone number at the bottom asking for money. Well, you think Zappa's really coming for you, Charlie? This is terrible. Your hands are tied, your legs are strapped, you're going under the blade. <laughs> is it funny, or should we really be concerned? Concerned, Bill. Look, I love rock and roll. 
But there has to be a time where someone says, enough. What you're talking about is censorship. We're not advocating censorship of any kind. We're advocating more information and self-restraint from an industry that has allowed these excesses to develop. Nobody is buying most of these albums anyway. That's not true. Judas Priest has a song titled Eat Me Alive. It's about oral sex, and it's sold two million copies. This is not fringe, Bill. I can't believe how good y'all are on TV. You seem so comfortable. It's an act. <laughs> you should do the next show, Shirley. Oh, my husband would have a conniption fit if he heard me saying those words on national TV. Besides, you two are better than Joan London. Oh. Um, you know, I say we reject Mr. Curtis's offer just so the rest of us can watch you on our favorite shows. <laughs> I agree we should reject that offer. Hmm. The warning label's what we wanted in the first place, wasn't it? Uh, a generic label administered by the record companies themselves? Sounds like the fox in the hen house to me. I'm sorry, honey, but we're being offered the booby prize and we're the winners. Well, what's next? I mean, we've already done Donahue. I say we really turn up the heat on those record people. Tipper, this iced tea is heavenly. Thank you. Mm. What about a Senate hearing? Ooh, now you're talking. Uh -huh. So glad you're home, Buster. <laughs> my, my, what's the special occasion? Does there have to be a special occasion? I'll be up there. I have reason to believe there may be someone trying to see me that I don't want to see. So, don't let anyone in, no matter what they say. Hey, monkey boy. There's some place we can talk. So, you want to tell me why you're bending over for the censor sorority? They're just a group of concerned parents that are exercising their freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. They might even have a point. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't want my kids to listen to. Rick Springfield, for example. But they've crossed the line, Charlie. With their connections, there's no telling where this is going to end. They're talking about labels, not censorship. Oh, come on, Charlie. We know how this works. They put labels on the albums they don't like. Walmart refused to sell albums with labels. Pretty soon, there are no more albums they don't like. What I want to know is, why are the people who are supposedly looking after my interests in our nation's capital licking the jack boots of the very people who want to make this happen? Hmm? It's a little complicated. Blank tape tax? Yes, I read the papers, Charlie. How much of that penny a minute tax do you think will make it to the actual musicians? We're working on a formula for that right now. Yes. Tape plus tax equals a big screw up the ass. And for this, I'm supposed to let a few ladies who got bored with literacy tell me what is and what is not obscene on my albums? They're too strong right now. We can't fight them. We got to wait this out. So we just give them the label? We're trying to find an alternative. <laughs> Damn. You know, I came here hoping to meet someone who cared enough about music to hate seeing it get censored. Instead, I meet some yuppie who listens to... Echo and the Bunny Men. They've got some good songs. Oh, boy, are we in more trouble than I thought. You got any decent record store around here? Meryl, get in here and bring a letter opener. I may need to impale myself. Guys? Oh, the man in the suit. What precious relics of rock are you unloading today? All right, we don't have much time, so I'm just going to give you the condensed version. Every few years, rock becomes a whipping boy to some politicians looking to make an easy score. And this is before they started to crop Elvis's pelvis. Dean Martin, 
banned from radio in 1951. Wham Bam, thank you, ma'am. His song was thought to be too suggestive. I was thought it was but a lady carpenter. Doesn't matter, they decided for me. Oh, this is a good one. Louis Louie. The FBI and the FCC spent months listening to this at various speeds, just looking for dirty words. And they found them. Right in their own dirty little minds. Bob Dylan, banned from the Ed Sullivan Show in 63. As if anyone could understand what he was saying anyway. John Lennon, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Janis Joplin, Rolling Stones, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Banned, banned, banned. All of them banned. Look at this. Where to begin with this? The record company asked me to rewrite a lyric because they thought the word pad meant sanitary napkin. I was really writing about an oven mitt. When Mercury refused to release, I didn't want to get drafted. I started my own label so that this would never happen again. Yet here I am. Why are you telling me all this? Because in every one of these cases, a subjective definition of obscenity was imposed by very few people on all of us. And in every one of these cases, there was someone who refused to go with the flow. Someone who stood up to this lemming-like mentality and said, enough. Now, it's usually been a performer. But in this case, it might have to be somebody like you. I know. It's scary for us all. Listen, Mr. Zappa, I appreciate you coming down. Girlfriend's waiting for you. <laughs> Colleague. She doesn't date co-workers. Don't bet on it. I enjoyed meeting you, Mr. Zappa. Save it for Congress, Charlie. I just want to know what side you're going to be on. I appreciate your point of view. Charlie, nah. I don't know if I'm the right guy for the job. Well, when you want to talk, and you will, I'll be at the Jefferson. Was that who I think it was? Yeah. Well, wouldn't those women just love to see you hanging out with Frank Zappa? Guess who the music industry's getting advice from? We went to a record store. Well, while you were out shopping, the PMRC rejected our offer, and the Senate scheduled a full hearing on porn rock. Everyone's waiting in the boardroom. Oh, no. They just made the announcement. We have very limited time to get ready for the hearing. What committee? Commerce. How many husbands do they have on that one? Well, it's been hard to keep track, but we know at least John Danforth, Ernest Hollings, Fritz, Al, Sam, and Packwood. So what you're telling me is that nearly half the members of this committee, in addition to the chairman, have got wives working with the PMRC. Yes, sir. You remember what I told you? You don't make it in this town picking fights with senators' wives. In fact, you're lucky if you get to stay at all. All right, here's what we'll do. We'll stonewall it. We'll let them have their hearing. I'll make a short statement about the more than fair offer that's already on the table. We're out of there between two bangs of the gavel. We're not making any waves, you understand? We go with the flow. John, I don't think that's such a good idea. I mean, all we've done is go with the flow and look where it's gotten us. Someone's got to go to these hearings and stand up for the music industry, and if it's not us, I don't know who it's going to be. You've got to look at the numbers, Charlie. We don't have the votes. No. No, we don't have the votes, and we're not going to get the votes until we convince Congress and the American people that the music industry isn't selling pornography to children. And how do we do that? We go to these hearings in two weeks, and we put on a show like no one's ever seen. We get Madonna, Prince, Michael Jackson. We roll out enough star power to make We Are the World look like a local talent show. We roll out enough earning power to make even the most anti-rock senators sit up and drool. And the stars will show up, right? Because, I mean, this is it. 
This is the only thing standing between their First Amendment and a bunch of politicians telling us what we can and cannot listen to. It's a freaking rock and roll Alamo. I don't want a spectacle. I want a bill. Then don't tie my hands, John, and I'll deliver it. All right, everybody. The hearing is in two weeks, and we're starting at a slight disadvantage. The PMRC has a five-month head start. They're riding a wave of unprecedented media coverage. They get 5,000 fan letters a week, and the Senate committee is comprised mainly of their husbands. But there's one thing that they don't have, and that they'll never have. Rock stars. And to get us started, a little inspirational music, courtesy of the Filthy 15. Let's go get us some rockers. We'll take it. Great, great. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah? That's, uh, that's Judas Priest. It's, uh, one of the filthy 15. You should really listen to it. <clears throat> Is this the part where you sexually harass me? You know, you right-wingers are all the same. You have this very uptight facade, but deep down, it's all just sex, sex, sex. What were you thinking when you put Frank Zappa on the list of potential witnesses? We only have 10 days before the hearings. We don't have time for this. We need mainstream stars. We need big earners. He knows more about this than anyone. We're talking about the U.S. Senate. These guys put the white in white bread. You don't go trotting a man in there who defecated on stage and then ate it. That's just a rumor. I think. What's the first rule of this business? Get paid up front? Never get emotionally involved. Remember? We're just getting some candy here, not saving the world. This is going to help us, I swear. If it somehow got out that one of the chief lobbyists for the record industry is working with Frank Zappa, that bill is dead on arrival, and some part of you must know that. Did you find it? Mm-hmm. Great. I just spoke to one of Senator Danforth's aides, and he said every senator up for re-election is trying to get in on this hearing. Oh, well, that's great. We should get our wish list of witnesses over to his office right away. And look what I found. Be my slave by bitch. Good work. What about the slides? Oh, everyone loves the slides. Most of the senators have already seen them. Well, how about we show a video? Right. Bastard or hot for teacher? I was going to say we're not going to take it. Can't go wrong with Twisted Sister. You're right. Sister it is. I have an idea for a witness. Good night! Who's this guy? Um, Mr. Snyder, I'm with the United States Senate Commerce Committee. May I speak with you for a moment? Is this about my taxes? Well, Mr. Snyder, Prince will not testify. Amazing. The Rolling Stones, Madonna, Michael Jackson, none of them. Six days to go, we don't have a single witness. Do these people appreciate what's at stake here? We're asking famous millionaires to justify what they do in front of a bunch of middle-aged men who can't stand them. I wouldn't do it. I read news. 
You guys won't believe this. I just got this from Senator Danforth's office. They booked their own rock star for the hearings. Who? You guys are gonna love this. Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister. Oh, no. I told you these women were clever. We gotta talk to them first. I'll track them down. What's the matter with you guys? Where are you going? Charles Burner, please. Have a seat. Don't worry. Mr. Burner, you better come out here. Now. You know, Mr. Snyder, we... Tipper's been after me from the beginning. You can understand it, right? Because I'm like no, the most recognizable is. face in rock and roll. It's true. And she figures this guy, this dumb headbanger, he doesn't know anything. Let's drag his ass out onto Donahue or something like that and make a fool out of me. So I've been putting her off. I'm putting her off. Because the way I see it, she's been rehearsing this censorship thing for like six months now. She isn't fighting for him. Well, I'm out of shape. I'm flabby. I'm hanging out in the studio. But now I'm ready. Now I am ready, Charlie. I've got this killer speech. I'm in fighting weight. Go ahead. Punch me in the gut. I can just hear her talking to Al. Al, honey, could you please get me Dee Snyder? Baby, she's gonna get Dee Snyder. But I've got a surprise for her. Yeah, boo! Because I'm one of the few rock stars who can speak English. Boo, boo! Fluently. <laughs> We're dead. Uh -huh. I didn't know you smoked. I don't. The big-named artists won't return our calls. Dee Snyder is insane. Curtis was right. Their connections run too deep. We're in a fight we can't win. Does mean you won't make partner by 35? That's not the point. You got me into this. Now what are we gonna do? You know what I love about this town? The cherry blossoms? Are you hearing anything I'm saying? You can walk practically anywhere. Frank, there's been something I've been meaning to ask you. Oh, joy. Well, there's this rumor going around about I you. I never ate crap on stage. In fact, I never ate crap anywhere. Unless you count a hotel buffet in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This way. And I love buffet, so I don't... Welcome to the Mothers of Prevention. Hey, we can't be here. I'm not even supposed to be in public with you. First rule of warfare is know thy enemy. Sun Tzu. Chinese guy. Hi, can I help you? <clears throat> she recognizes you. She doesn't. I've been me long enough to know. What can I do for you today? Well, I'm a parent. Oh? I have four precious children. Oh, how nice. Children are wonderful, aren't they? They are. I have two of my own. Fantastic. This is Charlie. Uh, he doesn't have children yet. Oh, well, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> now, as a parent, and future parent. We are very curious to know more about your organization. Oh, well, that's great. Would you like a brochure? I would love a brochure. I'll be right back. Great. Thank you. She's going security. Oh, she's helping us. Just, you relax. Just breathe. <sighs> Here is a brochure about what we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, and would you like some samples of the pornographic lyrics? Would I? These are some of the songs that we think parents should be aware of. Ooh, not really for bedtime reading, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> or television, either. Yeah, time to go, parent. Thanks to a generous grant from the Love Foundation. That wouldn't be Mike Love of the Beach Boys, would it? Yeah, he's a big supporter. Oh, so he had fun till Congress took our freedom away. Pardon so me? Did that little plan worked. God, that Love must be an angry guy. Oh. Name like Love, you yeah, think, yeah. you know. Get in the elevator, Frank. You really have four kids? Weasel Lamet, Moon Unit, and Diva. Those are like nicknames, right? 
Your face is my toilet paper. Where do they find this stuff? Wait a minute. How much money did Mike Love give them? Um, $5,000. That's it. That's how we get Middle America. We get the Beach Boys to testify. I think they've already taken sides on this one, Chuck. Who's the next best thing, then? I'm saying we can put on the Snyders and the Zappas. Zappa? He didn't need it. I checked. He what? Never mind. My point is, next to Snyder, he's Pat Boone. Now all we have to do is find Pat Boone. What? Someone the Senators will find untouchable. And we're not leaving tonight until we do. So get out your files, guys. Mm. All right. <laughs> oh, you're just hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you. This is Jeff Marvin. I'm an aide here at the Senate Commerce Committee. How can I help you, Jeff? Well, as you know, the hearing's only three days away, and I'm, I'm trying to get the senator prepped. But I'm having a hard time finding some of the albums on the Filthy 15. Uh, which one? Well, there's one by a band called Wasp. Oh, darn. What's that one called? I've got so many crammed into my head. It's Animal f Like a Beast, Mrs. Gore. Uh, I'm sorry. Animal what? F like a Beast, Mrs. Gore. <laughs> Eat your sandwich. Uh, um, you know, Jeff, I'm gonna give you Donald Bean's phone number. Uh, that'll be fine, Mrs. Gore. Okay, here it is. He's very good, too. Hey, what about the captain and Sunil? The PMRC cited one of their songs. Do it to me one more time. That hat of his gives me the creeps. Yeah, come on, we only got a couple of days left, guys. I think there's a good idea in here somewhere. Tony Zappa, stand right over there. Buddy. Excuse me. Uh, I'm looking for a rather hard-to-find record. Yeah, what's it called? Uh, I have it written down here somewhere. Ah. <laughs> hey, Dom. Yeah? We still got animal f like a beast back there. <laughs> uh, I'll check. I'll check. Oh. What about Peter, Paul, and Mary? What's their claim to blame? got boycotted. Government said Puff the Magic Dragon was a drug song. Well, wasn't it? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is it? This is it? Rocky Mountain High was banned in 1972 by radio stations across the country that feared the song had a pro-drug message, a message that the composer has repeatedly disavowed. I need to find an unlisted phone number in Colorado. Well, this is the last of the Filthy 15, sir. You listen to this, you'll be all ready for the hearing tomorrow. Well, what's this one called? Uh, it's, it's right there on the album cover, sir. It's... Well, I can't make heads or tails of this. What's it say? Animal f like a beast, sir. Fight like a beast? F sir. Truck? F sir. F C K. F like a beast. Hey, you can just tone that right down, mister. Here's the deal. Never interrupt a senator while he's asking you a question. And if you need a little time before answering, take a drink of water. I know the protocol, Charlie. Here they come. Well, that's subtle. Nobody's ever eaten his own crap on stage. And Alice Cooper, he never killed a chicken. Mm -hmm. What about Ozzy and the Bat? That one's true. Zappa, you gorgeous son of a bitch. Give me a second, man. We're going to annihilate him. So what are we doing out here? Feeding the friggin' birds? Not everybody knows we're working together. We should probably stay away from the hotels. They're crawling with press. Charlie's parole officer wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah. So who else is coming? John Denver. John Denver? This is a thank God I'm a country bitch? He's not even part of the filthy 1500. Banned in 1972. Don't worry, you're gonna love him. So, Frank, uh, do you want to read us your statement? I'd rather eat it. <laughs> we can probably help you make it better. Better. More effective in a Senate hearing sort of way. Well, given the nature of the hearings, don't you think it would be uh, disingenuous of me to allow my testimony to be censored? Mr. Snyder? Yeah. Do you have a prepared statement? Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, check it out. Got it right here. Okay. 
Uh, my name is Dee Snyder, and uh, like yourselves, I'm an average American. No, it's okay. My name is Dee Snyder. Howdy. I'm in the middle of my thing. Hey, Mr. Denver, glad you can make it. You must be Charlie. Yeah. Hey, Frank, Dee, nice to meet y'all. Uh, we were just listening to Mr. Snyder's statement. Uh, we'll be ready for you in a second. Oh, I can't really stay. I just found out I've got a meeting tomorrow with NASA. NASA, the space agency? They're considering me for a place on the space shuttle. You know, it's always been a dream of mine to see outer space. But there's no problem with you making it to the hearing tomorrow. No, I should be able to fit it in. I just got to get briefed so I'm prepared for my meeting with the space people. Uh, uh, Mr. Denver, it's kind of important that we're all on the same page. Yeah, don't worry. I know exactly what those guys want to hear. I'll see you all tomorrow, okay? Uh, Mr. Snyder, please continue. Okay, get out of here one second. Okay, all right. My name is Dee Snyder. Fit it in. I say he goes into space what now. What are we supposed to do? Drop him from the hearing. Impossible. We need him more than he needs us. You know what? Forget this. Nobody else gives a damn. Why should I? Hey, Dee. Dee. I'm sorry, man. You're the only artist who was singled out by these women that actually had the balls to show up. And I really appreciate that. Thanks for noticing. Don't worry, Charlie. I'll be ready. Hey, Dom. We need three more. Should I turn out the lights? In a minute. This will be our table. The PMRC will be over there. We need more chairs. They'll be here tomorrow. Now, what's the point? You were right. I screwed up. I broke the first rule. I got emotionally involved. And now my entire life is dependent on the testimony of three performing nut jobs. Wait a minute. It's not too late to get out of this thing. I can go to Curtis's office first thing tomorrow morning, tell him I was wrong, we pack up our rock stars, we get out of here. Hell, I might even still make partner by the time I'm 40. Okay, 45. You want to give up without a fight? What do you care? You wanted off this thing since day one. I don't know. I... I'd hate to miss the rock and roll Alamo. And frankly, I've always liked John Denver. The early albums, you know, right? The one that Country Roads is on? Good. It's very good. <laughs> oh, if only he could testify the way he sings. Ugh. Oh. We got Snyder and Zappa. What are we gonna do? Don't worry about them. Really? Give me one good reason why I shouldn't. Because real performers never give you their best stuff until they're in the spotlight. So, uh, you ever think we'd be working together? No, Mr. Zappa. I don't believe so. <laughs> I still love your stuff, though. You're kidding, right? Well, seriously. That song, Valley Girl's a hoot. 
All right, the A-team, the monsters of rock. Frankie, you take out the senators on the left. Johnny, you take out the ones on the right. I am going right down the middle. All right, sit down, D. You're scaring John. Gentlemen, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready, baby. Ready to rock out with my out. Friends, as we all know, politics is showbiz. So go out there, have a great set, don't fall off the stage. But if you do, take somebody with you. <laughs> oh, excuse me, D. Would you mind? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, here we go. I don't think I can do this. Don't think of them as the U.S. Senate. Think of them as your husbands. He's on. I can't fight with you about this right now. Can anybody read this? Everything under control? Yeah. Good. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Good, because these guys have been sharpening their knives all week. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this hearing is on the subject of the content of some rock music. I'm sure that we will be using words that will shock many of us in this room today, but I would hasten to add that when you use description that may be in bad taste, this is a hearing of the United States Senate, and we will have decorum. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I would first like to commend the PMRC for putting this under national scrutiny. Now, I have listened to these records, and quite frankly, I am appalled at this outrageous filth. If I could find some way to constitutionally outlaw this porn rock, I would. Certainly, the framers of the First Amendment never considered that this slime would be piped willy-nilly into the homes and tender young ears of our nation. I will be listening closely. Now, this is a very large crowd today, but we are not going to tolerate any applause, any demonstrations of any kind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a very popular video. You bet your ass it is. And I think these album covers speak for themselves. I thought we were doing the videos and album covers. So did I. Oh, that damn harpy stole our act. Born rock. It's my life, and I love sex. <laughs> We've come a long way from I can't get no satisfaction to eat me alive. These songs glorify rape, sadomasochism, incest, the occult, suicide, and oral sex, while rape, teen pregnancy, and teen suicide spiral out of control. Just last week in a small town in Texas, a young man took his life while listening to the music of ACDC. He was not the first. Uh, there is nothing on the face of the album that would notify you that the record you bought for your child contained pornographic material? No, nothing. Mr. Chairman? Senator Gore? This should be a real interrogation. When you responded to the chairman just now, you said that there was no way to tell whether or not the recorded material was pornographic. Now, some albums have a cover design which would indicate that, and some do not. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I knew that Prince was a teen idol and that he just won a Grammy, but I had no idea that his songs contained inappropriate material. 
I would have liked to. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. This is an impartial hearing? I can't believe this. It's wild stuff. I drank the vomit of the priest, make love to the dying whore. Bend up and smell my anal vapor. Your face is my toilet paper. On your face, I leave a shit tower. Golden showers, golden showers. I'm sorry your time's expired. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I, I know that for all of you, it was not a pleasant experience to read uh, some of these lyrics in public, but uh, it, it was very helpful. Oh, bless his heart. Um, John Denver is next on the witness list, but he's had to leave the hearing room for another engagement. He plans to be back What the hell is Denver? On. He got up a while ago. I so thought he was going for you. This will be uh, Mr. Frank Zappa. Get us back in this, Frank. Uh, Mr. Zappa, thank you very much for being here. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Senator. The PMRC proposal is an ill-conceived piece of nonsense created by bored housewives. A sinister kind of toilet training program to housebreak all composers and performers because of the lyrics of a few ladies, how dare you? What if the next bunch of Washington wives demanded a large yellow J on all material written and performed by Jews in order to save helpless children from exposure to concealed Zionist doctrine? So much for toning it down. The ladies' shame must be shared by the record industry and their lobbyists, who choose to bargain away the rights of composers and performers in order to pass the blank tape tax, a private tax levied by an industry on consumers. I need to talk to you. Now. While Senator Gore's wife talks about bondage and oral sex at gunpoint on the CBS Evening News, I am hard-pressed to define what is more obscene. You approve that statement? I can't tell Frank Zappa what to say. That's your job. You think that performance in there is going to help us? This is the truth. Since when is that something you bring to a congressional hearing? And where the hell is Denver? Morris is looking for him. He'll go on right after Zappa. Yeah, if there's any senators left by then. It may not look like it now, but these guys' testimony is going to turn this hearing around. I'd bet everything on it. You already have. Printing lyrics on the outside of albums is also an option. But if the album cover shows a buzzsaw coming out of a guy's crotch, I think it's safe to assume it's probably not for little Johnny. I, uh, I should confess, Mr. Zappa, that I have never heard any of your music. Well, I'd be happy to recite a few lyrics for you, if you'd like. <laughs> I, I think I'll pass. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Mm. Did I come on too strong? Mr. Denver is still not returned, so the next witness is... Uh, Mr. D. Snyder, the Twisted Sister. D. Snyder, that's S-N-I-D-E-R. I'm a happily married father who does not smoke, drink, or do drugs. I was born and raised a Christian, and I still adhere to those beliefs. Mm -hmm. Since I seem to be the only person addressing this committee today who has been a direct target of character assassination from the presumably responsible PMRC, I would like to show just how unfair their lyrical interpretation and judgment can be. Tipper Gore has claimed that a Twisted Sister t-shirt depicts a woman handcuffed, spread-eagled. This is an outright lie. We have always taken great pains to steer clear of sexism in all facets of our work. Tipper Gore singled out one of my songs, We're Not Gonna Take It, bestowing it with a V rating for violence. You will note from the lyrics before you that there is absolutely no violence anywhere in this song. I miss anything. Perhaps the PMRC has confused the song with its video, 
which is based on old Roadrunner cartoons. <laughs> Finally, Tipper Gore has claimed that one of my songs, Under the Blade, has lyrics encouraging sadomasochism, bondage, and rape. On the contrary, the words in question are about surgery and the fear that it instills in people. As the creator of Under the Blade, I can say categorically that the only sadomasochism, bondage, and rape in this song are in the mind of Ms. Gore. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Chair yields to Senator Gore. Mr. Snyder, what is the name of your band's fan club? The SMF Friends of Twisted Sister. And what does uh, SMF stand for when it's uh, spelled out? The sick motherfucking friends of Twisted Sister. Is this also a Christian group? I do not believe that profanity has anything to do with Christianity. Thank you. Well, I was under the impression from your presentation that you were a very wholesome kind of performer. Now, you say your song, Under the Blade, is about surgery. Have you ever had surgery with your hands tied or your legs strapped? The song was written about my guitar player, Eddie Ojeda. He was having polyps removed from his throat and was very fearful of the operation. And I said, Eddie, while you're in the hospital, I'm going to write a song for you. And is there a uh, reference to a hospital in the song? No, but there's no reference to a woman or sadomasochism either. Ms. Gore was looking for sadomasochism and bondage, and she found it. Someone looking for surgical references would have found them as well. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I find these statements to be incredibly insulting and rude. Mr. Snyder, can you tell me why you felt it necessary to attack Senator Gore's wife? I wasn't attacking Senator Gore's wife. You were just attacking Senator Gore's wife by name. I was attacking a member of the PMRC by the name of Tipper Gore, who happens to be married to a senator on this committee. Funny how that worked out. D totally kicked ass. Well, didn't he? Thank God. We're back on track now. When we go back in there, Denver's testimony finishes him off. I wouldn't bet on it. Thank you, Senator. You too. Now, you need any help with those NASA pencil pushes. You just give me a jingle. Thank you, sir. Now, who's this one to? Might get the bank. I don't think Rocket Boy is going to jeopardize his big ride by pissing off a bunch of senators. Do you? He'll be fine. begin your statement, Mr. Denver, I, uh, I just want to tell you how happy we are to, uh, to have you here. If there were more John Denvers out there, this, this hearing wouldn't be necessary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm very honored to be here today. I apologize for all the running in and out. It seems to be my day for meetings. Now, these hearings have been called to discuss the excesses of popular music and to determine whether or not these excesses should receive some sort of rating or labeling. Now, Mr. Chairman, in my mind, any sort of labeling would constitute a form of censorship. And let me be very clear that I am opposed to censorship in any form. Uh, my song, Rocky Mountain High, was banned by many a radio station uh, as a drug-related song. And uh, this was obviously done by people who had never been to the Rocky Mountains or experienced the elation, the celebration of life, the joy of living that one feels when he experiences something as wondrous as the Perseid meteor shower on a moonless, cloudless night. Oh, Mr. Chairman, what assurance have I that any national panel to review my music would make any better judgment? John, what we're talking about here is consumer information. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but I think that any self-appointed watchdog of public morals is suppression. I mean, that's how Nazi Germany began. Uh, John, let me, let me tell you that there, there is no chance of any legislation on our part. But, but I just heard several gentlemen here say that they would try and pass laws. Just believe me, uh, zero chance of legislation. We, we, uh, we just wanted to bring the issues uh, 
before the country. And you've done that, sir. And I applaud you. And let me also just say that I feel really high right now. now I'm high on having the opportunity to participate in my government here today. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senators. when they offered them. Oh, mercy. Mr. Zappa, though I disagree with many of the comments that you make, I have been a, a fan of your music, believe it or not, and, and frankly respect you as a, a, a true original and tremendously talented musician. Did you see the look on Dan Ford's face? It's on the record, right? Zero chance of legislation? Oh, you better believe it, man. We did it, baby. We did it, yeah. <laughs> Were they anxious to get rid of Denver or what? Oh, man, it was major. Listen. Anybody says anything bad about John Denver in front of me again, I will kick their ass. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Snyder. We appreciate your efforts. Thanks. <clears throat> Charlie, a moment. Pam, thanks a lot. Good work, partner. Thanks. Now look, I just talked to Thurman's people. Our tax bill is not going to be coming back to the floor this session. This gives us some time to clean this thing up before next year. Clean what up? You saw what happened in there. We, we got the PMRC on the ropes. You gotta learn to quit while you're ahead. We make a deal with the PMRC now while they're off balance. We give them their warning label, they drop out of sight for a year, we get a chance to bring our tax bill back in the next session. No, we don't have to give them anything. We negotiate. Charlie, that's the play. If you've got a problem with that, I'd like to know it now. We didn't come this far to sell out for a warning label. I'm not gonna do it. I'm surprised at you, Charlie. I thought you were smarter than this. I think we're done. You'll come by the office tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Norris, let's take a walk. Great job. Yes, sir. It turned out well, huh? Mm -hmm. On to the next. Absolutely, sir. Look forward to it. Hey! Charlie! Charlie, what happened in there? Curtis wants to give them the label. And you said no? Over a lousy sticker? It's not just that. Charlie. And don't give me the first rule of this business speech. That's my line, remember? But no one is gonna care about all this ten years from now. We don't know that. All I know is, I can't go back in there, and this bill, this job, none of it seems that important right now. Guess I shouldn't have had that purple Kool-Aid Tampa offered me, huh? I guess not. Well, maybe we should look on the bright side of this. Well, now that we're not working together, there's no reason for you not to go out with me. Are you both happy with the parental advisory label? This is why the PMRC was founded. It's a good agreement because it shows that the recording industry can and will address the concerns of parents. So I just found out that my home state of Maryland is considering a bill that'll make it a felony to sell pornographic records. I don't suppose you'd want to uh, come up to beautiful Maryland next month to help me prepare for the hearing. I think I... Uh need to take a break from politics. A long break. I don't blame you. Listen, I'm sorry about the labels. I don't know why. Industry's gonna be just fine. You know how it is when you tell people they can't have something. They just want it more. All those songs I showed you in the record store, they have more in common than just being banned. They all sold millions. I wasn't talking about the industry, I was... Could have been worse. No, yeah, they had their way. Government would be all over us. Senators rewriting our lyrics. A lot worse. You did good, Charlie. 
Listen, I want you to try this out on that colleague of yours. It's not Echo and the rabbit people, but uh, she might like it. Voluntary compliance? Is it really worth it? We got a lot more than that. We lost so much. So did they. Welcome to Washington. I don't know. It just feels like such a waste. Someone had to have gotten what they wanted in all of this. We're in time. We're in time. You're gonna have three cartons of eat me alive here by nine this morning. You're killing me, is what you're doing. You're killing me. You see, in ten years, sensitive radar will be able to detect an incoming warhead. No, oh, no, 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 no. Leave the these are like rumors on. And then the U.S. Air Command mm -hmm. will be able to launch a missile. Intercept it and explode the payload. Oh, sounds expensive. What is this music? Oh, I got it from a friend. are you listening to? Honey. Shit. <laughs> 